Um, so uh, we're going to call to order uh, the hearing of Robin and Cynthia No. Uh, their application is dated August 11th, 2020, and they're uh, filed with the Board of Appeals seeking a special permit and a finding from the Board of Appeals that their property, which is a pre-existing non-conforming use, um, they want to undergo changes with that, whether those changes are not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. Uh, in this case, the applicants are requesting to build a 26 foot by 19 foot two-story addition to the rear of their property at 156 Ferncroft Road in Milton. The property is in a residency zoning district. Uh, the residence was built in approximately 1934 as a single family residence and is considered pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, the applicants have filed a plot plan uh, with the board. It's dated May 19, 2020, and it shows the proposed addition would be built at a distance, was proposed to be built at a distance of 5.1 feet from the right side property line, when 10 feet are normally required by section 6C1 of the bylaw, and 26.91 feet from the rear lot line, when 30 feet are required under section uh, 61 uh, rear yard setbacks. Uh, my name is John Leonard and I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals. And with us tonight are uh, uh, two board members, Virginia Donahue King and Nicholas Gray. Um, in addition to the advertisement, which I've just read into the record, we'll have evidence at this hearing, uh, the applications of the no's uh, and it's dated uh, August 11th, 2020, and to that uh, application uh, is an extra letter from Mr. Prondack, our uh, building commissioner, uh, who, who says that these um, improvements uh, need a special permit and a finding under section four of the bylaw. Um, we have a plot plan by Michael Paul Antonino. Uh, it is dated, I can't find the date on it. Oh, there it is. It's right in front of me. May 19, 2020. And it shows the subject property and the proposed addition in relation to the uh, uh, side and rear setbacks, as, uh, as we indicated. We have a set of uh, uh, drawings from uh, Michael Blute, uh, an architect, uh, showing the uh, proposed additions in... Five pages, uh, all of which we'll have as uh, evidence at the hearing. In addition to that, the board has received uh, uh, correspondence uh, dated August 11th, 2020. And uh, it's, it's from uh, neighbors who were sent to this application for special permit. And they include uh, Kathy Larson of 147 Ferencroft Road and to Antonetta Yoko of 165 Ferencroft Road, uh, Robert Marchman of 160 Ferencroft Road. <laughs> and it looks like it's Prestia, though it could be Priscilla, I'm not sure, Watson of 14 Norman Street. And we also uh, received a, uh, an ascent uh, from uh, Amanda Strong and from Rebecca and Eric Leverault of 152 Ferencroft Road, uh, Milton, Massachusetts. The board has not received uh, any correspondence uh, uh, opposing the request for a special permit. So uh, apologies for the late uh, delay and some of the technical difficulties. No worries. Uh, we, we see that all day on the uh, some of the major newscasts when prominent people are trying to, uh, to speak. <laughs> so I, I guess this may be expected. But uh, thanks to, uh, to, to Beverly Sutton and to Mike in curing our technical difficulties. So uh, um, who's going to make the presentation on behalf of the applicants? Um, uh, are you Robin or are you going to have Cynthia? I am Robin. My last Yeah. Are you going to make the presentation? Yes, sir. Um, 
Welcome, so, to, the, welcome to the Board of Appeals. We're delighted to hear from you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, so when you say make the presentation, do you mean like... Um, well, just tell us briefly what, what your project is and uh, uh, how, how it's not more detrimental to, to the neighborhood. In fact, that it's advantageous to the neighborhood and all your neighbors believe that to be so. And uh, maybe just briefly describe the addition and why the uh, uh, addition is, uh, is necessary for your growing family. Okay, will do. So um, we're trying to do an addition, as you um, have stated, um, a rather, I guess, uh, at least in our eyes, a rather large addition, <laughs> um, hoping to um, build a garage to the rear of the house. Um, and then on top of that, build a, um, a larger family room, um, basically for our kids to play in and for us to hang, um, um, just kind of hang out as well um, as a family. And then above that, build a, um, a, a, an extra bedroom and a, um, an extra bathroom as well. And also um, a laundry room in the upstairs as well. Um, so the reason for that is because um, before when we, when we bought the house, we were still um, newly married and didn't have kids yet. Um, and in the last seven years, we've, we've grown, we've doubled in size with a, um, a seven-year-old son now. And a daughter that is turning three years old in about next two weeks. <laughs> so we'd like the extra room for them to run around in. Um, and uh, my wife Cynthia, her parents, um, they're based in up in Methuen, um, which is it's not far, but it's 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 a little bit of a haul of a drive. Um, so when they come down to visit um, during the weekends, um, her dad is is getting a little bit older, so we don't we're not comfortable with her with him driving. Um, well, he's not comfortable driving during the winters past like two, three o'clock, basically when the sun starts to set and we're not really comfortable with him driving at all. <laughs> um, so we, <laughs> we'll strike that from the record. <laughs> um, so I mean, they, they, we, we have had the best, get the guest bedroom and her, her, her father is one of the, um, I'll call it old school where he likes to sleep in his own bed. So we figured that if we build more space. really old school. Yeah. <laughs> and even if it's his own daughter's house, like he would not stay there. Um, even with his other daughter, um, her sister, she moved out to Phoenix. They refused to move out there because they can't sleep. Um, so we figured we build the extra space. We build that space out and say, look, this is your bedroom now. You know, we have extra space. This is for you. Um, you can move one of your beds down or we can buy you a new bed and you can just stay there as long as you need to. Um, or as long as, you know, you don't get sick of us. <laughs> um, and then in addition to that, I also have a, I'm an elderly aunt myself, um, whose, whose husband, my uncle passed away basically two years ago. And, you know, she's, my kids love her. She loves my kids and she watches over them a lot. So she would be really helpful. Um, after schools during the week during the weeknights and helping us helping watch my kids i mean she basically watched my kids um but she's getting a little older now so we don't trust her driving as well <laughs> um and i guess the the we understand after speak with uh, mr prondack that you know we could just apply for for um not a special permit but just basically stay within the 30 feet and five and 10 feet from our neighbors but then we want the extra five feet to the side because, um, well, we want the house to be uniform and, and kind of so that it doesn't look like an addition was built. So it just kind of blends right in with the rest of the house and the rest of the neighborhood. Um, and that's why we approached our side neighbors, Robert, um, make sure that he was okay with that. And, you know, he gave us a blessing and basically said, your side, you know, you guys do what you want with it. <laughs> Um, but you know, we had to give them the respect though, because if they weren't okay with it, even if we go through this process and, and, and you guys approve it, it would be a nice for them. And that's not something we want when, if we're going to be staying there for at least the next 30, hopefully plus years. Um, and then the extra feet in the rear, um, is mostly because, um, we like the, um, we like the garage, but then the way our lot is built, um, the back, the back of the house is, is. A, a u-turn if that makes sense so basically we have a long driveway coming to the back and a u-turns into into the back of the house and that's that's the extra space that we're trying to build into but it's also extra space that i have to snowblow during the winters um i have to haul the snowblower out of the garage now the current garage 
and snowball that entire area before I get to the usable driveway space that we have as well as the sidewalk. So um, because of that U-turn area, that little curve in our driveway, um, we would need that extra room to, to turn the cars into the garage um, comfortably. And then, and I guess this is more of a want slash need, um, <laughs> I guess um, like a small little mud room in the garage too. So when we get in there, the kids can just, you know, take everything off instead of trekking in mud and snow and whatever they do. <laughs> and and um, I guess to your point of um, how it's, I guess it adds to the, to the neighborhood. Um, we've seen a lot of, um, a lot of our neighbors do additions as well in our, like on our street alone. Um, there's, in fact, there's, there was one that was just, just done, I think last year or two years ago. And then the same contractor basically did three or four houses on our street. Like my neighbor, my neighbor, Robert Marchman, they added a um, two dog houses um, to the front of the house. And they think they're thinking about doing more work. And there's another house that's, I, I, we, we've been watching them build and taking notes on <laughs> what we could do as well. Uh, but they, I guess they, they knocked it down to the foundation and built up. So we see people investing in the area and we, we love to do so as well. And honestly, I mean, we, we, we like some more space to, to kind of grow, but uh, as some of you might know, real estate in Milton is getting a little, um, it's out of my, my, my price, my, my pay grade. Um, and the best thing to do for us would be to, um, to add an addition and, Honestly, that way we don't have to start all over because we love our neighbors too. And, and you know, they're, they're nice, they're friendly. I mean, we, and moving anywhere else, it would just be um, a, a kind of an if, I guess. Not sure if I'm... No, I think that, that, that's great. And you've, uh, you've got youngsters and uh, presumably looking forward to the Milton school system. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot of uh, applications like yours uh, where uh, with impending expenses for prep schools and in college um, it's 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 hard to move into uh, larger houses uh, in in this um, overheated uh, real estate market here in, in Milton and take on financial obligations that uh, that are disruptive of family life yes. so well, we see a lot of uh, applications like this and uh, people who uh, don't want to have to move to Stoughton or to Avon or even Braintree. They love Milton and uh, it's, uh, th these are tough questions. Okay, um, so when you talk with the neighbors, we have the sense of the neighbors. Were there any neighbors that you spoke with who uh, uh, assented to, to your application for special permit but didn't have time to sign a petition or to send a note to the board? Um. No, I mean we spoke directly to the to the neighbors that were directly abutted our um, our um, our lot. Um, basically, Robert Marshman and um, and Rebecca and Eric. Um, they're the neighbors on the sides of us, and um, Amanda Strong is um, the one that is directly behind us. Um, and I believe um, Preston is the one that signed up for Fourteen Norman. Um, I don't believe their property line directly touches ours, um, but they can still see into our yard um, during the winters when the leaves are, are you know, well, the trees are bare, basically. So we figured that, you know, since they can see in us, um, we should give them the, the, the same respect and ask if they would be okay with it as well. We are very kind. It's fair to say that uh, from all the neighbors that you spoke to and showed the plans to and discussed the project, uh, mm -hmm. uh, everyone assented to your application and uh, nobody was in opposition. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. That was an excellent uh, uh, presentation. We appreciate that very much. Let me ask my colleagues uh, if they have any questions about uh, your application. So, uh, uh, Mrs. King, do you uh, have any questions of the notes? I think I just have one question. Um, I don't have the plot plan in front of me, so I just wanted to um, ascertain if the current, let's see, the the new the new addition would be 5.1 feet from the side lot line. And that, am I to understand that that is where the house is now as well, 5.1 feet? Yes. Okay. And, um, okay, that, that was the only question that I had. Yep. I mean, 
uh, again, it was really um, we were asking for that five point one because we wanted the the addition to be uniform with the um, the current house. That way, it's not like um, I guess a set of Lego building blocks. <laughs> Okay, let me, uh, thanks, Mrs. King. Uh, let me ask uh, Mr. Gray, uh, Nick uh, Gray, do you have any questions of the no's? I, I don't think so, other than just to, just to confirm, I think that that last point, which is if we don't grant the special permit, it sounds to me, sorry, like the, the house will look almost worse, right? I mean, it, it won't fit in with the character of the neighborhood because the addition that's sitting on top of it will be smaller but complying with the bylaw, but small, not as big as the current house. So to my thinking, yeah, I, 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 that, is, that, is that the sense of it? Because I, I, I too don't have the plot plan or, the, or any of the plans at, the, at this place. Is that fair to say? Um, I, I would say so, just because like I said, it would be um, kind of like Lego built. Um, I guess, I, I mean, I, I guess, Architecturally, I, or aesthetic, for aesthetics, I would um, defer to my architect, Michael Blue, who's also on the line as well. Okay. Um, Michael, did you want to add anything to that? Or? Sure. So in, in terms of the addition, the addition is entirely to the back of the property. You can see, you cannot, if you're standing directly in front of the house, you can't actually see the addition. But okay. if you look down the side lot of either side of the house, you'll see it in line with the, fa the face of the existing house extending into the backyard. Um, the dormers on the on the on the rear of the house, the the ridge of the of the addition projects to the rear, and we have dormers on both the left and right hand side, both of which are pulled back um, to be in the field of the roof, as opposed to aligning with the the walls on the first floor. Um, part of the work um, is to enclose um, better than half. Uh, basically, there's an existing front porch which stretch across stretches across the front of the house. Um, the intent is to enclose, basically enclose that front porch, leaving the columns as a feature of the enclosure. Um, so to expand the living space into that front porch, in the, into the front porch area as well. Um, but that, that, that kind of enclosure of the front porch is really the only thing that's visible from directly in front of the house. Great, that, that's uh, very, very helpful. Also, uh, Mr. Gray and, and um, Ms. King, um, if you guys, I know you guys said that you didn't see the lot line there, um, but I can, if you guys want to see it, I can pull it up, share my screen with you, if you and maybe get a better visual if you would like. I'm, I'm satisfied it, as long as it, it's the same measurement and the same um, into the, into the um, prescribed area mm -hmm. in the same manner, in the same. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I got what I need from the, from what you've said. Uh, Thank you. Okay, great. Do uh, either Jenny or Nick, do you have any questions of the architect, Mr. Bloat? No. Okay. Um, we thank Mr. Bloat for attending. That's, um, that's very thoughtful. Let me uh, open up the hearing if the applicant has finished uh, their presentation. And uh, the first question would be, is there anyone uh, present uh, either on the Zoom system uh, virtually or telephonically? Uh, who wishes to speak in support uh, of this uh, special permit for a section four finding. Okay, the record seems to indicate that there's no such person present. And uh, I would ask uh, whether there's anybody present virtually or via telephone uh, who either has questions of the applicants or uh, Mr. Blute, uh, or who otherwise wishes to speak in opposition to this application for a special permit. Okay, and there's a stony silence there. There is uh, no such person present uh, at this meeting. So uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. No, if there's no, uh, with no pun intended, if there's nobody who, uh, uh, if you have not nothing else to say, uh, then we'll, uh, end the evidentiary por portion of this hearing and consider the uh, application in open session right here and now. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, Mrs. King, do you want to be heard first? Sure. Um, it appears that um, this is put together with, with taste and um, with regard for the, the neighborhood. Um, we are not, although we're extending a house to be more out of compliance, 
it's not any further out of compliance. It's just on the same line. Um, and I, I feel that the, the request of three feet out of 30 feet in the rear is, um, is, is quite de minimis. And so I don't think that um, that's problematic in as much as we have the consent of, of the neighbors behind you. So I, um, I would tend to want to vote for this. Okay, Mr. Gray, please. Uh, I would I would also tend to agree, especially given the fact that the standard under a special permit for Section Four is much uh, more liberal with respect to granting relief in cases like this than, say, an application for a variance, which has a much stricter standard. So, um, it, given the uh, my uh, the evidence presented by presented sorry by the nose, I would say that. Um, there uh, definitely is a need for uh, the addition and that the description of it is, uh, is not uh, more detrimental than what's there currently. So I think they have met the standard under section four and I would be willing to vote in favor of granting the special permit. Well, I agree with both of my colleagues. I think uh, that um, Robin has, has done a wonderful job of making a presentation before the, uh, the board. Um, we um, have a classic situation uh, in Milton, which tends to be either very, very old or very, very young. And uh, the youngsters in town, uh, uh, many times, uh, are purchasing into a very hot and expensive real estate market, and they tend to purchase smaller houses, and they have growing families that have to be accommodated. And uh, I think... Uh, Robin has done a, and Cynthia have done a wonderful job here, not only uh, uh, hiring a, an architect who's sensitive to their needs and to the neighborhood, uh, but, but also uh, uh, they have generously spent their time uh, explaining this project to the neighbors and uh, in, in getting their unanimous assent uh, to the uh, special permit. And as Mr. Gray said, this is a special permit and not a variance. The standards are much uh, uh, less legally stringent. And uh, in, in my view, and I know it's the view of my colleagues, uh, that this uh, particular application uh, for special permit relief on the sidelines um, is, shows the changes will not only not be more detrimental to the neighborhood, uh, they're going to make the house more consistent with the neighborhood and indeed improve the neighborhood. So this is a win-win situation for uh, both the, uh, the no family, the neighborhood, uh, and the children. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased and um, we, we, this is the type of growing family we, uh, we the, the, in my view, are the lifeblood and the future of the community. And uh, this is exactly the type of people we want in Milton um, in the Milton school system, and you, you'll find your children will probably be select persons or maybe be on the Board of Appeals someday. I certainly uh, hope at least they become select persons or otherwise participate in town government. So all those in favor of granting the uh, section for finding and uh, the special permit, uh, please say aye. 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 Hi. So we have a unanimous um, uh, vote, three nothing, and uh, congratulations uh, on your special permit in section four finding. Uh, just as a matter of procedure, uh, we craft our own decisions here at the board rather than uh, sign standard form documents. So it will take maybe a week or two weeks to get that uh, uh, prepared and uh, circulated and then signed by all of the board members. Uh, at that point, uh, it's uh, filed with the town clerk. And uh, even though there, uh, there is a, uh, there's a 20 day appeal period, e even though there's been no opposition to this uh, special permit application at the public hearing. So 20 days have to pass before the special permit uh, um, is, is issued by the uh, town clerk. Uh, at least certified by the town clerk, and, and then uh, make sure with, uh, with your architect uh, that you record a certified copy of the special permit in the registry of deeds so that you make your special permit uh, legally effective. Um, and uh, if any prep work needs to be done for this uh, 
the, the proposed additions, uh, we, we leave that prep work up to uh, Mr. Prondack as to what he'll allow in the interim period of time. And he's usually somewhat flexible, uh, but you just you really want to be somewhat careful just to not spend a lot of time and effort and find out there's an appeal comes out of left field. Um, so um, congratulations on your special permit and uh, we'll do our best to uh, uh, issue this uh, special permit at, uh, at the earliest date we can. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. So you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yep. Congratulations. And um, uh, let me ask Jenny, do you want to write this uh, special sure. permit binding? Sure. Thank you. Uh, we Thank you. get that permission. Thanks, folks. Bye. Nice to nice to meet you, Mr. Blue. Thanks nice, for coming. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Thanks Beverly. So uh, that's that's our first hearing, and uh, when we organize some paperwork here, we'll uh, and the first hearing's adjourned, so you folks can uh, uh, leave the meeting at any time. But you want to stay and watch the next hearing, you certainly can. Um, and, and we'll get the paperwork ready for the next uh, meeting, which is a variance hearing. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. We have Thanks. a good night. Yeah. Congratulations. Good, good luck. Okay, we all set for our second hearing. We're gonna to call to order our second hearing of the uh, evening. This is the 745 hearing, and it's on the application of Aaron Hatcher and Diana Matoba. The application is dated June 25, 2020, and they uh, seek a variance from uh, section 63 of the Milton zoning bylaw uh, in this particular application, the Inspectional Services Department received a complaint uh, that a chicken coop and a roofed chicken pen structure uh, were being built or has been built on the property at 102 Brook Road in Milton. And the structures are less than eight feet from the side property, from, from the side and rear property lines uh, where the bylaw um, Section uh, 6C2 dealing with the side yard property line uh, requires a 10 foot um, deviate, 10, 10 foot distance from the sideline. In the uh, in section 63 dealing with rear yards uh, requires eight feet of, of uh, distance from the rear line. Um, my name is John Leonard. I'm the acting as chairman of this hearing. And that my fellow board members are Nicholas Gray and Virginia Donahue King. Um, in addition to the application, we have received the 625-2020 application. We have a letter from Birch Amer, Code Enforcement Officer for the Inspectional Services Department. It's dated May 26, 2020, uh, with respect to this uh, particular uh, chicken coop and pen uh, being uh, not eight and 10 feet from the side and rear property lines. Uh, we've received a memorandum from Diana Dede Hatcher of 102 uh, Brook Road in Milton. And it's uh, uh, three pages in, in length um, describing some of the uh, history of the, uh, the project here. Um, 
I'm not going to read that into evidence because I'm, I'm sure Ms. Hatcher is, is out there and is uh, going to address both of these important issues. Uh, she was kind enough to file with the board uh, photographs uh, showing uh, the uh, chicken coop and the pen and um, some chickens and the um, fence and uh, the rear, where the rear lot line is and showing the distances. So we thank the applicant for uh, all of those documents. We uh, have a second memorandum from uh, um, D.B. Hatcher. It's dated September 13th, 2020. Um, and we have a, another one, an earlier one, August 6th, 2020, related to the application. And we also have received some correspondence with respect to this uh, particular application. Um, uh, we have a letter from Charles and Isoline um, They actually don't state their, their last names, uh, but uh, they reside at 96 um, Brook Road. And uh, they write to the board, uh, they've received the notification of the application for a variance. Um, and they're writing to, uh, to the hat to uh, Aaron and Diana that uh, they weren't aware that there were issues being raised with respect to the chicken coop. They're surprised to learn that it was an issue. They have no objections to the chicken coop being located less than eight feet the property, than the property line. Um, and they have not experienced any foul odor, I think they mean. It says odor, but I think they mean odor. Uh, or chicken noises. And uh, they wouldn't know that the chicken coop was so close to the property line. So they asked the board to grant the variance and they're sure that this chicken coop is not the first one to be built in, to be built in the town of Milton, and they will try to join on the, the Zoom meeting. So we, we thank them, Charles and Ms. Lane for their kind uh, letter. We have a you know, letter from uh, Gloria and Gladiola Emil, or email, E-M-I-L. And they're from the Bouncy Bean Home Child Care at 103 Road, 103 Brook Road, Milton, Massachusetts. And uh, they write uh, that uh, they're in support of the, uh, their neighbors, Aaron and Dee Dee Hatcher, who have a chicken coop on their property. They're in full support of keeping the chickens and the chicken coop where it is. Once they feel it's, uh, its presence in the neighborhood has been an improvement. As the business owners of a family childcare program and educators, uh, they feel that the chicken coop uh, and the uh, uh, the pan, I'll call it, has not been a bother, but rather an improvement to the neighborhood. And they uh, thank uh, everyone for their consideration. So we have those uh, two um, assents to this application. We also received another document that, that I could have done to see here. Do you have it? I have it in my paperwork here. That, that's the, the longer document that was. It's attached to the application. Yes, okay. This document uh, points out that there is another. Uh, this, is the, this is the applicant. I'm looking for, deal with me, folks. Um, Yes, we, uh, oh, yeah. I, I have it, but we also received a, a letter, um, which I recall here. This is a, uh, a two-page letter from uh, Sarah and John Barrington of 9 Austin Street in, in Milton. Um, this is a, a fairly lengthy and detailed letter. Um, let me just ask, is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Barrington, are you, are you virtually present or present by telephone meeting, uh, yeah. telephone for this meeting? Yes. Okay. And uh, do you folks intend to, uh, to speak um, in opposition to the application? 
Yes, we do. Okay, great. So um, if you have no objections, and they also want those a couple of photographs uh, from the residents. Uh, rather than reading this lengthy application because it will put people to sleep, um, if you, if they're gonna testify, then why don't we, we have this as evidence, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll listen to you and you can basically explain what the letter is all about and uh, how it relates um, uh, to your position. Is that satisfactory to you? Okay, it is because I mean, I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes reading this and I think nobody will, unless they have it in front of them, they really won't understand what was said um, at, at the end of it because it, it is uh, very in, intent. Um, let, me, let me just say by way of framework, uh, the, the letter uh, believes that uh, this um, use and the positioning of the chicken coop uh, and pen is a nuisance, is a degradation to the character of the neighborhood, that there's no hard, hardship involved, that it decreases property values, that it uh, disrupts the peaceful uh, enjoyment of um, neighboring houses. And uh, here a process, the process was not followed and uh, it, it's not a precedent that should be allowed by the Board of Appeals. So we, we thank the Barringtons uh, for submitting this letter and uh, with our paperwork. So um, uh, let me cover a few more preambles and we'll get to the hearing. Uh, my name is John Waters, I'm Chairman of the Board of Appeals. And with us uh, tonight are uh, fellow board members of Virginia Donahue King um, and uh, Nick Gray. Um, and the rules of the board, uh, we'll first hear from the applicant um, as to what her position is regarding these uh, issues. And then uh, we'll hear from any person who's present uh, who wishes to uh, speak in favor of this application for a variance. And then we'll uh, hear from people who either have uh, questions of uh, Aaron Hatcher and Diana Matova uh, or who otherwise wish to speak in opposition to this uh, application. So uh, we're tape recording the uh, proceedings, even though they're being televised here. Um, so in the tape recording is the official record of this particular uh, hearing. So uh, I think uh, without further ado is um, Mr. Hatcher and Miss, uh, Mrs. Matova, uh, present tonight? Yes, we are. Oh, good, there you are. Uh, thank you, you didn't show on my screen and I was, I was afraid you'd be speaking uh, by telephone and that's always a very difficult way to do it, so. Well, uh, we're here. Okay, great, and it uh, looks like you're in the family room. Yes. <laughs> um, welcome Don't to the- Don't their little ones. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I know exactly what you mean. So welcome to the Board of Appeals, and why don't we hear from you uh, in support of your application, and then we'll see if the board, like the first hearing, I don't know whether you were present for that, we'll see if the board members have any, uh, have any questions, and then we'll just move on with the hearing. So uh, who's gonna be making the presentation? I will. Great. Um, we're delighted to hear from you. Thank you. Um... So a, a bit of a background context to this situation. Uh, we started thinking about this last spring, last year. Um, we wanted to um, add a couple of pet chickens to the family, mostly for the sake of our children to have the chance of growing up with animals. Um, and we, we were gonna build a small coop and an enclosed pen to go with it. Before we did that, I uh, looked up chicken keeping on the town of Milton website and read whatever I could find there. It wasn't much. I talked to animal control and I was told that chickens and chicken coops are not regulated. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of structure that will qualify as. Um, what, year was this? What, what year was this? 2019. Oh, 20, I thought it may have been longer than that. Okay, 2019. Great. So spring of 2019. Yep, thank you. Um, 
based on size, I found that I don't need a permit to build it. It doesn't have a foundation. Um, so it's not really a building per se. It doesn't have electricity. It's a, it's a five by seven coupe. Um, I couldn't find more detailed information and I've seen other people's chicken coop. Chickens are growing in popularity, by the way, nationwide and in Milton. I've seen other people's chicken setups and they're usually along the fence, somewhere in the back. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I couldn't find anything against it. And the neighbors who are on our side, Charles and Nizzeline, who are here tonight, um, don't mind the coop being there or the chickens. They say they love chickens. They're not bothered by it. Uh, the neighbors in the back, right now that's where John and Sarah live, but at the time they didn't live there yet. There are other neighbors, we, we had a very good relationship with them as well, uh, but the house was sold, they were renting, the house was sold and it was unoccupied for a while. So the coop was built uh, and after it was built, that's when John and Sarah moved in. Uh, we met them a few months later. The coop was already there. They didn't say anything against it. I hadn't built the pen yet. Uh, um, the pen, again, before building it, I went on the Milton website. I looked for any regulations, but I wasn't sure what kind of structure that was. It is because it's a, it's a fence, but it's not a fence. Uh, I wanted to put a plastic roof on it to keep it dry so it wouldn't smell. Um, so I wasn't sure how to look for information on that. So I called the building department. I spoke with two of the inspectors independently, uh, Joe Prondak and Jay Ballou, forgive the spelling, I don't know how to pronounce it. No, um, a bit tricky. I described how I was gonna build it and where it would be. They said, that's fine. I asked, well, can I put a plastic polycarbonate roof on it, not a real roof, just the uh, corrugated panels from Home Depot. And they both said, yeah, that's fine. You can put it anywhere you want because we don't regulate that type of fence structure. <clears throat> can I try uh, to stop? stop? I just want to ask one question so we have it clear. Yeah. Uh, are you uh, testifying that either Jay or Joe told you you could build the chicken coop, uh, in, coop. in its present home? Oh. The, the, pen. The, the pen. The pen. Yeah. pen the exterior is a, pen. Yeah, it's a welded wire fence, yep. uh, which has a polycarbonate corrugated plastic roof on it. Okay, so uh, the, the pen could be built uh, anywhere. What, yes. what did they say about the chicken coop itself? Uh, so then he asked, well, what about the coop? And I described the coop where it is. And he said, oh, the coop is too close, though. So I said, oh, no, I honestly... I did not intend for it to happen like this. I, I looked, I didn't find anything. I thought I was in the clear. If had, I'd known, had, I would... I'm sorry, had the pen, uh, strike it, had the coop been built at this point? Yes. yes. It had been completed at this point? Yes. Okay, is it fair to say that you, you built this yourself? Yes. yes. Is that, <laughs> that's what it says in your memorandum. Okay, why don't you continue? Yes, yes. I okay. built it last summer, summer of 2019 finished it when it started getting too cold to build. It was finished, it sat finished but empty over winter. Uh, in the spring of this year, 2020, is when I started building the pen and that's when I called to ask about uh, the pen because that was un unclear what it will be classified as. And at that time, both of the inspectors said the pen is okay, but the coop is too close. And that was the first time I realized the coop was too close and regretted it immediately. Believe me, if I'd known I would have not, would not have done this. I don't want to be going through this. I don't want to be inconveniencing people, mostly ourselves, because it would be a lot of work to move it. Um, and so I asked what my options are. And he said, you can either move it now or you can apply uh, for a variance. But if the neighbors don't mind, then there's no problem. And at the time, so I called, I first called in the fall of 2019, um, ahead of building it. That's before John and Sarah moved in. And uh, he said, if the neighbors don't complain, then there's no problem. 
so I decided to see if- I'm, I'm sorry, who said that? Was that either Jay or Mr. Prondack? Mr. Prondack. So I talked to Mr. Prondack in the fall of 2019, and then again in the spring of 2020, and I spoke, spoke with Jay Ballou in the spring of 2020 as well. So in the fall of 2019, when I spoke with Joe Prondack, he said that the pen, the coop is too close, but the pen with its roof is okay. Um, and yeah, so sorry, it, just, just to clarify, um, we called about the pen because again, we want to make sure that that's the part we worried about, mostly because it had to have wooden structures that go on the ground, as, you know, as a pen. Um, we knew that putting a structure in the ground, you know, to affix it there, pouring concrete, that might potentially make it qualify as some kind of different structure. That's what we were told at the time pretty clearly that it's a fence, unless we put a floor in it. That, that, that was the yes. criteria that we were given. That, uh, that it's, it's a fence, that, the, that putting the polycarbonate roof doesn't matter, that the, the main criteria they use was whether or not it has a floor. And we never zero intent to have a floor in there. So that was our understanding before we started building it. Uh, yes, so t fall of 2019. Who told you that, by the way? Joe who, who told you? Okay. Oh, and Jay, you asked them both, didn't you? Uh, Jay, that was the spring. In the fall, I spoke with Joe Prondack, and he said the pen was okay, even with the roof, because it doesn't have a floor. Yep. Uh, the coop is not okay. I can either move it or apply for variance. Uh, but if the neighbors are okay with it, then there's no problem. I don't need to do anything. At the time, I think there was no one in the house where John and Sarah live now because it was changing owners. Um, then in Could the- Can I ask you one question, just, just to have it clear. When, yes. when, when you spoke with Mr. Prondack in 2019, that was before you constructed the coop. Is that true? It was after I built the coop, before I built the pen. Okay, so, and, and that's, what, that's what, after it was built, he told you that um, as long as nobody objects, you can do anything you want. Is that what he said? I don't want to put him on the spot, but that is what. Oh, did, you, oh, did he say something to the effect that, well, you can get a, you can probably get a variance for the coop, as long as nobody objects to the variance at yeah. at a hearing. Let's say, yeah. Is that more of what he was saying? Well, that, that, that if someone objects, objects to the coup, that, that it might be taken up formally, but that we could apply for a variance. Yes. You know, okay. given that it was built with all the best intentions, checking the information we had and everything at the time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that, that, uh, that sounds more in keeping with uh, yes. what Joe normally would say. So why don't you go on, please? Yes. So we decided to um, go with the variance. But being that he said that the pen will be okay, um, I proceeded to build it. Uh, and while I was building, I would occasionally run into John Barrington in the backyard. We would talk. He was very friendly. He would ask about the chickens. I would tell him I, he did not object at all in the beginning. I offered him eggs. When the chickens start laying, he said, that sounds wonderful. And we talk about the kids and the chickens and whatever. And um, I thought everything was fine. The, at this point, the coop had been there for half a year. Um, I'm surprised that if they have a problem with the structure that they didn't raise concerns all that time. Uh, and I was almost finished building the pen when one day him and Sarah came out and all of a sudden they completely changed their position and got very hostile and said that this is not okay, it needs to go now, get rid of it. Um, so I called, this, is, this was in the spring of 2020, that's when I called the building department again to confirm what they said about the pen. Uh, at this point, the coop, I was gonna apply for a variance on the coop, but the pen was the question mark because I heard from Joe Prondack that the pen is okay. So I called again. Uh, this time he wasn't available. So I spoke with Jay Ballou, mm -hmm. described what it looks like or how I built it, the roof. And he said, it's okay, even with the roof. Uh, it's okay where it is because we don't regulate this type of structure. Um, so then eventually I, 
did find J. Pro Joe Prondack, sorry, again, uh, and spoke with him after I'd received the letter from the building department ordering Back to, yep. to move it. Yep. Because the letter said that both the coop and the pen were in violation. Yes. So at that point, I was worried and concerned because I'd heard from two inspectors that the pen was okay. And I was worried and very confused as to why now it's not okay. So I called again. I spoke with both Joe and Jay again. This time, Joe Prondack said he never said that. And I was, I felt betrayed. And uh, he said, well, you should have asked for that in writing. And I absolutely did not expect that. I, I thought I could. Well, trust him. I mean, trust his, his, word. words, his words, I guess. But If I'd known, believe me, any of this, if I'd known, I would not have gone about it this way. And I didn't realize I needed it written, signed, and stamped. Um, so I called and asked to speak with Jay Ballou again to see what he would think about our pre conversation and he said he doesn't know why Joe would say that and he, he himself said that he thinks it's okay so he stood by his word he said clearly we have some internal disagreement within the department of whether this structure is okay um, so I don't know if they've figured that out or not um, now both of them said that if it didn't have a roof it would be okay uh, Jay says it's okay even with the roof Joe says, take the roof off and it will be fine. Uh, so really what it seems like, uh, if we took the roof off, the pen will be fine. So we're only talking about the coop. And um, so I have a follow-up question. I don't know if this is the time to ask, but um, let's say if I took the roof off, can I put a tarp over it? or greenhouse plastic or something that's not a roof, but it would achieve the same purpose. Now, the reason why I need a roof on there isn't just because, oh, I want a roof. It's because the waste management system for the chickens is if it stays dry, it won't smell. And we've had the health department inspect over a dozen times already because the Barringtons have been complaining so much. So they've been here, they've sniffed, they've gone inside, They've never found any smell or any nuisance. Um, that's because everything is very dry. It's in everybody's best interest that we keep it dry. So if I have to take the roof off, I'll take the roof off. But I'm just asking if there's any kind of covering I can use that doesn't qualify as a roof and won't be in violation that I can put on it to achieve the same effect. And then the coop itself, as we've learned is indeed too close, which was not intended on our part. We never meant to be a problem for the neighborhood. In fact, the way we built the coop is, it's not like you might imagine a little wooden shack, rusty with, you know, animal enclosure. It's a replica of our house. Um, it has the same shingles, it has the same paint, it has real windows and doors. Um, so it's not an eyesore for the neighborhood. It looks like a cute little mini house. Um, and the pen itself, it's stained wood with black uh, hardware and we meant to make it look nice. Uh, as, a, as for um, complaints, when John and Sarah turned their opinion around, started complaining, we promised we would address every single concern and we did asked them what their problem was and I addressed every single one. One thing they said, they think they thought that rain water would pour onto their property from the roof, which there's still a space between the roof and their property, but whatever I said, I will put gutters on it. And they and they said, no, that's not gonna help because we're not interested in solving problems. We just don't want this here. But I was determined to solve problems because if there's a problem, I want to address it. So I did put gutters on it anyway. Um, I put two security cameras, uh, one inside the coop, one in the pen, 
that transmit sound so I could monitor from our house if the chickens are being too loud. Um, we hatched them from eggs for the kids to watch the development of the egg and the chick and to raise them. It's been a great experience for the kids, by the way. Um, so because we hatched them from eggs, we couldn't control if we'd get any males or females. Um, but we were determined not to keep any roosters. We told everybody that we're not keeping roosters. They're allowed. I agree. Yeah, they suck. They're, I don't want to be waking at sunrise with a rooster. Yeah, like, no. no. They're, they're aggressive. We have little children playing with them. We don't want roosters. That was never the plan. And we got rid of all of them. Out of the 11 chickens, it turned out that six were male. Five we butchered. Uh, and one, the last one, we relocated. Uh, found him a new home. So right now we have five female chickens. Uh, so that was the noise complaint. Then smell, we have a odor and waste management system. We do gardening, we have a large garden and um, the dirty bedding is going into the garden for fertilizer. In fact, we just did that last weekend. We scooped everything out of the coop, buried it in the garden, to kind of compost over winter. Um, so it's a closed system, we don't need the Milton Trash Service to pick up chicken poop. Yep. We are managing it ourselves. Like I said, health department has been here on and off all summer over a dozen times already. They've been inside, they've sniffed. They don't find any problem at all. A noise concern has been abated because the roosters are gone. There's no smell, it looks clean, it's very well managed. Um, so I feel like we've addressed every possible concern there is, except the main concern of, we just don't want this here, which we believe is unreasonable. But it's also worth noting, um, I mean, if we had bought some sort of a prepackaged coop or something that was pretty easy to transport, then whatever, we move it. Um, the issue that it was, it was custom built, um, it, it was custom built because we wanted to look at it not be an eyesore. Honestly, we visited a lot of people's coops in the Milton area and, you know, we, so, so there are, there's a variance in quality, let's put it that way. The, the chicken themselves wouldn't complain, but we figured we wanted something to, to be nice to the neighbors, you know, because not because we thought we needed to, but because we have no desire to have problems with our neighbors. Um, so the fact that it was custom built and assembled on, on the spot there, we're unsure whether it can be moved at all without being torn down and it's being occupied by chickens. That's just, was one of the reasons why we're asking um, for a variance is because the act of moving it would actually be I mean, we might not be able to simply move it. Yeah. Um, I, I want to elaborate on that. And again, believe me, if I could magically poof it out of there and place it somewhere else, I would. But because of the way it was built in the place, it was built in the corner and our property is on a slope. Uh, so we've been told that machinery can't get in there because of the slope. So we can't just get a tractor or forklift or something to drag it out by um, with because of the slope and because of the way it is behind the garden, which is a raised bed. Um, the space is very confined. It was the perfect space for the coop because it was in the back corner. It wasn't used for anything. It, it, we can't grow anything there because it's in the shade of a large tree. Um, it was just sitting there empty and that was just the perfect spot for the chickens. Uh, oh, one more thing I want to add among the concerns that we addressed was um, we put a very tall privacy fence as tall as the structure itself um, between us and the Barrington so they wouldn't have to look at the chickens. Um, so there's the tall privacy fence, the gutters, the cameras for listening. And we, as soon as we heard someone crowing that day, we took care of it. Um, and the smell system and everything. We've been very responsive to complaints and uh, addressing everything as it comes up. Uh, but at this point, even though we would love to address this as well, it will be incredibly difficult to move it just because of where it is and what it is. And we would need to tear it down and rebuild a new. And this took about a year the whole thing took about a year to build and um, it will take a very long time to tear down and rebuild. And we do have jobs and young children. So this will be a 
a little bit at a time over a long period of time kind of thing. Um, and if the difference is a matter of seven feet, it's currently about one foot for the, from the property line. If we're talking about a matter of seven feet, that's just a little over his height. It's not that big of a space. Is it really going to make that big of a difference that it would put so much hardship on us to move? And um, last note, since the pen seems to be okay, even if we have to take the roof off, if we, had, if we were forced to move the coop back from the Barrington line, that would not be empty space. That would be freed up there. We would just extend the pen. Uh, so the chickens will still be in that space. It would just be the open pen as opposed to the coop. And if their concern is just the existence of the chickens, moving the coop is not going to make a difference in that regard because they will still be there and they'll still be in that space. So I guess then the question is, what would they rather look at? The nice shingled roof of the little mini house or more of the open pen with the chickens in it? And uh, we feel like we tried to address problems and to problem solve and to be good neighbors, but we're continuing to be bullied really at this point for seven feet. And we just feel that that's unreasonable. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Do you have anything else you'd like to, uh, to say? I think that was all. Okay, uh, let me, I've got some questions uh, that are just too long, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to summarize them and not take up too much time here. Um, is, it, is it true that the first time that uh, you, you sought to put the chicken coop on your property was 2019? Yes. Okay. And, and did, did you file an application with the Milton Board of Health uh, to, to get a permit to, to build the coop? I was told that Milton does not regulate chickens and does not require permits for keeping chickens. Who told you that? Animal Control and the Health Department. But but you've indicated to us that the uh, either animal control or the health department is coming out and checking the pen and because in response to complaints in response to complaints they they've only been coming here because the Barringtons have been complaining and filing numerous complaints a lot of which I have to point out have been exaggerated and not based in fact because as an example one of the complaints the health department received was that the Barrington saw a skunk on their own property and called complaining that I was harboring a skunk inside my chicken coop which is impossible on two counts first skunks are predators and eat chickens if it was in the coop there would not be chickens in the coop it's like yeah, saying there are foxes in yeah, the coop. and look, second look. is that um, I have welded wire mesh uh, half an inch wide on all openings of the coop, the windows, the door, the vents to prevent animals from getting in uh, because I don't want vermin in there eating the feed or eating the chickens themselves so nothing can get in. Um, so anyway, they've been... Specifically to, to, your, to your question though, um, they, they told us in advance that the Board of Health just doesn't regulate chickens. They have no yeah. intent to regulate chickens. They, they, I guess in this case, in response to a complaint made to the Board of Health, they look into it because that's their job, you know? Yeah, they were responding to the complaints yeah. of um, noise, smell, the water runoff, the skunk. They've uh, come out here to inspect every time there was a complaint and they found there not to be a problem. Um, they said that the town doesn't regulate chickens. However, the wording on that is unclear and they're right now working on revising of the specific rules to make it more clear what animals need the permit. At the, at the Board of Health, who told you you didn't need a permit to have a chicken coop or to have chickens? It was Nancy or that? The, well, first it was Nancy at Animal Control and then the Board of Health 
basically everybody I've spoken with has said that we don't need a permit for chickens. Okay. Uh, because I'll, I'll tell you, I, I don't know much about permitting chickens or animals uh, in, in the town of Belton, but I, I did do a search um, and I, I came up with a Board of Health application to keep animals in the town of Milton. It's a permit application and it, it indicates it's applicable for any type of animal but for a cat or a dog, okay? Um, and, and it says in, in chapter one, it says keeping animals in the town of Milton, uh, what's 1E definitions, it says fowl, I assume that's chickens. Yes. Um, but I, it could be geese or some or other. Ducks. Or, ducks. Well, ducks yeah. Can be kept, it, it says on the application, please submit the number of domestic chickens, ducks, or geese owned, along with contact information, including the, your phone number and, and, and there's an email address where to send it. And then when it says license and application requirements, uh, in section three standard says, all areas housing animals, which I'm gonna assume is our chickens, uh, must be operated in such a way that they do not become a nuisance to abutters or the general public, and that uh, all uh, that a rough sketch uh, of the stable or presumably uh, house where the animals are being kept um, has to be filed, and and so I, I whatever they said and what you said, uh, I just want to ask you that. You did no sketch has been filed with the health department as to where the the uh, chicken coop was going to be placed. Is that fair to say? Yes, because they told me that I don't need to do that. So the original rule about stables and um, animal housing was meant for large barn animals like cows and horses. There was an amendment made in 2015, I think, to exclude chickens from that. Uh, because people are keeping chickens as pets and the town didn't want to regulate small pet animals. That's when they added the wording fowl can be kept, but it, as they've admitted, it was poorly written. It's unclear. Um, about that, that was on November 1st, 2015. Their application says that. Yes. The Board of Health added language to include domestic fowl as, yes. as, being, as being permitted. But it, it, it does also indicate that uh, you have to uh, file some type of a sketch that says a rough sketch showing the, the pen or the stable and where it's going to be. But let me get to the direct question. So it's, it's fair to say, irrespective of what you were told at the uh, Department of Health, you, you don't have a permit for keeping chickens in your backyard. Is that fair to say? Yes, because they said I don't need one. And continue to say that is, is yes. worth, worth noting. But yeah. continue to say that. I don't know. You're supposed to uh, file a, a, a pay a fee of, I think it's $50 when you file the application. And this, uh, this particular application is about five or six pages long. Um, so I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to say. Maybe that's why they didn't want us to file it because five or six pages long, yeah. they have to read. Uh, uh, they, um, Laura from the health department was here today, actually just to do a final count of the chickens and to look at everything again. Um, and she said that there's a meeting of the Board of Health on October 5th, when they're gonna be revising these very rules to make them more clear, because as they are right now, they're not clear. The intent of the Board of Health was to not regulate chickens. She said today, we don't want to be issuing permits for hundreds of chicken coops. This is, this is too much work for the department. They can't handle it. Chickens are not a nuisance. Um, that, the intent of that addition in 2015 was to exclude chickens from the requirements of permitting, licensing, setbacks. Ambiguous, yeah. But it was ambiguously written, and she said that that's been bothering her this whole time, and this is an opportunity for the rules to be revised and to be made more clear. Um, so it's clear that the Board of Health does not intend to regulate chickens in the same way that they do horses and cows. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's clearly that there seems to be a, a disconnect between 
uh, what a particular reading of the rule as written and what they continuously tell us beforehand, continuously and literally up to today is, is their intent for it. Uh, we had been going on what they tell us as humans, what their intent is. Like if, if the people who manage it tell us, no, you're not expected to do this. That's what we had been going by. Okay. Um, and you're welcome to, yeah. to call them and ask for a clarification of the rule because I agree the rule yeah. is very unclear. And they recognize it's unclear as well. Yes. That's why they, they'll be revising the rule itself in just a matter of weeks. Okay, but in any event, that, that doesn't affect the zoning issue we have. Yes, sure. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of separate. Let, okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, what, what do you say is the distance from the rear of your residence to the corner or back lot line where the chicken coop has been built? Would you say that's 50 or 60 feet? 50 or 60 feet? I mean, from our house to the chickens? I, I, would, I wouldn't know. I mean, Maybe. I, I, or, I, I think it's probably less, less than 50 feet. Okay, and, and you, did you consider putting the chicken coop up closer to the house so you could get more access to the eggs and, and to the chickens? Um, the areas around the house, um, uh, most of our property is on a slope, so it's very difficult to build on a slope. Uh, the flat area that we have immediately to the back of the house uh, is the kids' play area. Again, because it's dangerous for them to play on the slope. Like I can't put the swing set on the slope. Uh, so we have their swings and slide and things where they play. Do you um, know the, uh, the grade, the approximate grade? I know you're not engineers, but do you know the approximate grade of the slope from the residence, which is sitting on, near the street, uh, and the rear lot line? Is it uh, the residence is five feet higher or 10 feet higher than the rear? Or? Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a full story. So from yeah. completely from the basement to the yeah. top from the four story. So it's probably about uh, at least 10. Yeah, 10 to, 10 to 12 feet. Yeah, 10 to 12-ish. Yeah. yeah, because from the front, the basement is completely underground from the front. Yeah. But on the back, the basement is ground level. Okay. So Great. the height of the story. And it's a full size basement. I mean, the roofs, the ceiling there is at least the height of the one up here. Okay, so uh, now uh, at the present time, you have five chickens. Five hens. Uh, they're yeah. all females. Females, yes, they're all females. Okay. Five females. And the, the coop is five by seven. Yeah. And uh, do you have any, this, you're probably not going to be able to answer this, so don't, don't, don't worry about it. What, what is the, uh, you know what the weight of that coop is? I don't <laughs> know. You, you told us you had uh, uh, some, some contractor or somebody say that it would be difficult to, to bring a crane in or bring a front end loader in to try to move? Yes, yes, because of the slope. Yeah, we've, we've had other work done. Uh, we built a raised garden bed. Um, we've had trees, trees planted. planted. Yeah. Uh, we've worked with A. Thomas and Sons a lot. Mm -hmm. And they've told us that uh, because of the slope, it's just not safe to bring equipment down there. Okay. And can you tell us uh, how often do you uh, do you uh, you clean up the coop? Uh, you do that on a regular basis. The coop is kept very clean, yes, and there is no smell, and um, it's as verified by health department. Whenever they come out here to investigate noise complaints, they also take a look around and take a sniff around, and they've never found any smell. Okay. Then that's, uh, that's all of the questions I have. Let me see if my, uh, my colleagues have any questions. Uh, uh, Mrs. King, do you have any questions of uh, the applicants? I, I don't, no. I think um, 
have get, given a very complete um, presentation. Okay, uh, Mr. Gray, do you have any questions? Yeah, I'm interested in hearing more about the slope and shape of the lot. Can you try to describe from how does the lot, I mean, it, it, am, I right, am I right in understanding that it slopes sort of from the Brook Road side down, back towards yes. the property? Is it, yes. is the, does the backyard slope differently uh, from the side at all, or is it just straight, sort of straight yeah, from the hill towards, uh, to the north towards Austin Street? Yeah, south to north. Okay. Um, is that slope uh, different or similar in other yard, other lots in that neighborhood? Are there, is it sort of the same all, all around or how can you, how does that, how is it the same or different than other lots in your neighborhood? Um, it looks like for all the properties on our street, some time ago, I'm not sure when, most of the lots, ha most of the properties have their lots elevated. So there's actually uh, retaining walls and all, all along our street, the, the lots are actually flat because our properties have an elevated. So if you stand in our backyard and look around, our backyard is even with the properties behind us. And on each side, there's a retaining wall for the rest of our property. So as far as I know, our property is the only one to have this massive slope. Um, we, we considered when we first got the home, we, we talked to A. Thomas, we had them come in and put some new soil in there. They, we had detailed conversation about the grading and all this kind of stuff there. We actually, um, they mentioned basically every property around ours drains onto ours for that reason. We've had water buildup issues in there in the past as well. Uh, we left it as it is, mostly because they told us it would also be a great nuisance to our neighbors if we were to raise our property line because we start draining on them all of a sudden and it could cause a, sort of a chain reaction. But we're the only property on, on, on this section of Brook that has such a slope. The rest have long in the past, I imagine, raised their properties up and put retaining walls in. Okay, thank you. That's, that's it for now. Okay, well, I, I don't have any further questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, that, that's all. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for your uh, uh, presentation. Let's uh, see, is there anyone present uh, either virtually or on, tele on the telephone who uh, either has questions of the applicant or who otherwise uh, wish to speak um, in support of this application. Okay, uh, the record indicates that there's no such person present. Um, is there anyone uh, present uh, who wishes to speak in opposition to this application for variance? Yes. Yes. I'm Mr. Leonard. Um, it's Joseph yep. Andrews, and uh, I've had the pleasure to go before the Board of Appeals uh, for variance to have my our deck built on our home at 11 Austin Street, and my property is uh, directly behind Aaron and Dee Dee's property. Um, hello, Mr. Gray, Ms. King. My neighbors, um, Charles and Celine, who I met years ago when we first came before the Board of Appeals to have our deck built, and they surprisingly and unbeknownst to us showed up in support of our um, uh, request for a variance. And unfortunately, over the years, we haven't had a chance to really get to know them, but they did support our second application, which we greatly appreciate. I've gotten to know our neighbors to the right, both um, uh, John and Sarah and Desiree and your husband, whose name I always forget, I'm sorry. But that's, um, again, it's, it's more reflective of just, I guess, times. Um, and we've gotten to know Aaron and Dee Dee a little bit over the time. And I, I must say that my heart is racing and I am not happy to be here tonight to oppose this. I want to, I want, I want to say that first of all, because Mr. No said very eloquently in the beginning of his presentation for his uh, special permit for his um, addition, how he consulted his neighbors first and he went and talked to his neighbors about his addition and his project before he even submitted a building permit, a request for a permit. And I really believe that we would not be here today 
if that same courtesy had been extended to us as neighbors who directly abut Dee Dee and Aaron. But to be honest with you, I am not greatly impacted by the pen because it's closer Although it directly is behind my uh, neighbor Sarah and John's property, it is maybe the the pen is probably, I don't know, maybe a foot or two from my property line uh, to the right corner of my property line, but again, really close. Um, so I'm, I'm a little dismayed by the fact that, that we're here, we didn't have this, we didn't have the discussion ahead of time because I've, um, I've been in a town since 1998, and I've had the pleasure of working with the Board of Appeals, the Building Department, Joe Prondek, um, Jay. I've actually had Jay come out once when I was trying to put some papers down in the front of my house, and he told me that I couldn't put the papers down, and I thought it was, well, you know, right in the front of the house why and he explained why and we didn't put the papers down um i also unfortunately uh, my mother-in-law who is deceased now um had a contractor who built a um, finished um, apartment in her basement and unbeknownst her he didn't pull a build building permit and she didn't know because she's an immigrant didn't speak english very well what the process was for requesting a, uh, a permit and coming to the Board of Appeals for a variance for a mother, uh, in-law apartment. And she was told that uh, she had to tear that apartment out, which meant removing a kitchen, all the plumbing, electrician, electrical, and plumbing in the bathroom in the kitchen and electrical because she didn't follow the process. So my opposition to this is and I want to be clear about this, is not because of chickens. The chickens, to me, have been less of a nuisance than I thought they were going to be. Um, when we first moved on our street in 1998, the neighbors across the street from us um, had roosters. They had two roosters. They drove us crazy. They were adult roosters that I'm sure, Charles and Isaline, you may have even heard them back in, uh, 98 and 99 and 1997. We all complained. The, the neighbors uh, realized that they were a nuisance. They tried to bring them in the basins, basement of their home, and we still heard them. Um, they eventually got rid of their, um, their roosters. So when I first saw the chicken coop being built last year, I was surprised and I thought it was a playhouse for their kids. And I said to my wife, wow, look at that. That's a beautiful little playhouse that they're building for their kids. And then I saw the pen and I realized what was happening. Um, I did also speak to Joe Prondek. Um, I have not formally complained to the Board of Health, but I have attended two consecutive Board of Health hearings and have made my uh, feelings known and they have gone from being a little dismayed by the idea of roosters to acceptance of the chickens because they're not a nuisance, but more concerned about the lack of respect for the process that the town has clearly laid out for how these kinds of permits and variances are supposed to take place. I'm also concerned about um, the fact that we live in a very dense community and the you know, and I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to dispute what Dee Dee and Aaron said about finding information on the town's website. But when I wanted to find information about keeping chickens in Milton, the Google search took me right to the Board of Health's page and it said clearly what the process is. It clearly says chickens are fowl, fowler, chickens are animals, domestic farm animals that are housed in a structure are housed in what's called a domestic stable, so to speak. And there's special guidelines. And I know we're not here to debate the Board of Health guidelines, but in addition to the permit, there are regulations about how close to the setbacks 
property setbacks of uh, butters, those structures are supposed to be kept. Now, again, I think the idea of keeping the chickens, the chickens are not, you know, we hear them in our back, when we're out in the backyard, we've heard them at seven o'clock in the morning for 15 minutes making their noise. Maybe they were happy to be being fed at that time. But again, they're not a nuisance, okay? I haven't smelled them, all right? I haven't seen any predators um, or anything. But I find it, I'm not gonna say insulting, but it's really, I think it's a, you know, it, it's, it's, it's one, it's, it's a dismay that the excuse that we couldn't find the information or the information is not clear, it's being used to set a precedent and to bypass a, a process that all of us, Mr. N Mr. No, I had to follow more than um, twice and my, my mother-in-law had to follow, which led to her losing thousands of dollars. So the information is easily accessible. It's clearly accessible on the Board of Health website. And if you Google sheds or, or um, on the inspectional services um, homepage, it also gives you information. And it clearly says, if you have questions, talk to us before you take action. So I watch you build, the, and see this is, I'm really struggling here because these folks are my neighbors, they abut me. We see them every day, right? And I have good relationships with every one of you. And to have to say, to talk about this when it could have been avoided is really difficult. Because all, you didn't talk to anyone ahead of time before you built it. Let me, let me finish. Don't interrupt me, please. You will have a chance to rebut. I watched you build that shed by yourself, pretty much. I saw you put it, to, I mean, the uh, chicken coop. I watched it being built. It didn't seem very difficult. I was really impressed by the skill set that, that uh, my neighbor had to be able to put both structures up pretty much by herself. Right? So I think it's really unfortunate that we're here and that the process that the town has laid out wasn't followed. You didn't talk to us. We're right behind you. Um, our neighbors, um, the Solomons, had sold their house and didn't even live next door where um, John and, and uh, Sarah currently live. They lived up on Blue Hill Ave and rarely came down except for to cut their, their lawn. So. I think it, it, it's, again, it's really, it's, it, I'm dismayed by it and I'm further dismayed by the letter that we receive where in the characterization that you are using to describe John and Sarah as being bullies and bullying the town um, and, you know, town departments complaining. And um, I found them to be as, pleasant as any of my other neighbors and, the, and those of you who are in this meeting. Um, and it's a really bad characterization and it's derogatory to say the least, if not disparaging as well to describe them as such. And I, I don't even know who else got that letter, to be honest with you. Um, and, and because they're following the process, they're following a process that allows them to complain about something that they feel uh, in a process that wasn't adhered to. And I think I'll close on this. A again, I I'm, I'm really, I have such mixed feelings and I, I, I would have hoped that by now we could have come to a process of mending and have been gotten to a better place as neighbors about this. But the letter that you sent out asking for our support is why I'm here expressing how I feel so strongly about this process and opposing it because I felt you, you know, they, my, my neighbors and that live next to me, John and Sarah, who I like as much as I like, and I know Charles and Iseline and, um, you know, 
Desiree and her husband and, and even you guys. I mean, we don't, we don't talk much and you guys are out in the backyard. We probably haven't spoken in, in over a year or two, but, but I think again, it, it's distressing. It's really disturbing that, that we're here now at this point and it could have been avoided with a conversation because lastly, I'm a licensed builder, a licensed construction supervisor in the state of Massachusetts. I know the building codes. I deal with Joe. I deal with um, Jay and the other um, um, inspectors, be they plumbing inspectors, wiring and inspectors. And if you had asked me about it, I would have said, and also because I've gone through the variance process, I would have said, well, I think you guys at a least should talk to Joe. I think based on what I know about structures in the, in the, the zoning laws, it would be illegal to put it that close. You wouldn't have been, then at that point, you would have got more guidance from the town and would have saved what you're now describing as an inconvenience if you have to move it. So, you know, I think I've said enough. And again, you know, for me, again, and to, to, to all of my neighbors, this is not about chickens for me. It's about a process. And, and the bigger picture is the, the Board of Health's regulations and shame on them if that they have ignored their own regulations because they don't want to enforce them. And that's what I almost heard here tonight. They are ignoring their own regulations because they don't want to enforce them. And if they rewrite them, to make this possible and so they don't have to come out and regulate chickens or do their jobs and inspect them, that's a shame. What are we saying about our town? You know, and lastly, if I had to move, if I was doing this all over again and they were chickens or roosters or whatever other domesticated animals that were in the back, in, you know, in my neighbor's backyard, I might think twice about purchasing because it's so dense. It's not like someone's living on three acres, um, I'm sorry, three quarters of an acre of property and you have a little more space. This is really a dense uh, neighborhood that we live in. And, you know, yeah, I'm done. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Mr. Andrews, could I ask you one question, please? Yes. In your capacity as a builder. Um, do you have an opinion as to whether there's, there's some way, uh, if the applicants wanted to move the shed, uh, I say shed, I mean the coop, so that it was eight feet off of the rear lot line, um, but they have this slope condition that they've described and you've seen. Um, is there a, Perhaps an easier way or what type of methodology would you suggest to try to move the shed uh, without having to dismantle it and build it somewhere else on the property? Is, is that a big an issue, as big an issue as, uh, as the applicants indicate? I know well, they, I, they I, spoke with uh, uh, Bonnie Thomas, a, a, AJ, I think it is Thomas, and sons, and they seem to indicate that it would be very, very difficult to, to move the shed, to strike it, the coop as a, as a unit. I, I actually thought I heard them say it would be hard to get um, heavy equipment in there because of the slope. No. Um, so I have not stood in their backyard, so I can only see part of their backyard from my porch. And I know they have a greenhouse, and I know the way their property slope, it's about a 30 about a 30 to 40 degree slope from the Brook Road to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And there is some space at the bottom of the slope to where their, um, their garden is. I'm not sure how much space that is. And I'm not sure how much space, because I haven't seen it, is between the front of their pen and coop to the edge of their, their, um, their, their greenhouse. In regards to moving it, the only thing I can say is this, I, I've watched, Dee Dee build the shed. She built it herself a piece at a time. She, there wasn't a crew in there building it. There wasn't a custom uh, group of uh, builders in there putting it together. 
I was really impressed by her skills and her ability to, to do that alone uh, with the occasional help of her husband. So I would imagine that putting it, and as they said, there's no foundation. So I would imagine that taking it apart would be the same a reverse process of building it. Unscrewing here and there to pull it apart and to re rebuild it. I understand that, as they said, would be an inconvenience to them. But, you know, my, my poor mother-in-law had to, you know, we, we're going over there to her house to, to try to spruce up her, her basement now because her, the kitchen and bathroom is, is gone. So, I mean, that's part of the consequence of not following the process uh, or, or doing enough research to understand um, what that process entails. So, I, I don't, you know, um, that's the capacity of how I would want to lend my, my expertise as a licensed construction supervisor. That, um, again, I haven't stood in their backyard. I don't know what the measurements are. I believe the distance from the corner of their house to the corner of where the shed is could be closer to, it's between 50 and 60 feet. Um, my backyards, uh, the width of my backyard is about uh, 40 feet. And I think the left corner of my backyard almost is adjacent or in direct line with the, the rear left corner of their, their house. Mm -hmm. And um, there's probably another 20 feet from the right corner to where the corner of the shed. So, again, it's not about the chickens for me. It's about the process. It's about precedent um, and, um, and also communication and just being neighborly, you know? I mean, I, I was so impressed by what Mr. No said and how, the process they went to to communicate to their neighbors. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andrews. So let me just make sure... Uh, my, my fellow board members don't have any questions. So Mrs. King, do you have any questions of Mr. Andrews? No, I don't. Okay, and uh, Mr. Gray? No, I, I, no, not at all. It was very oh, well. Great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Andrews. We appreciate your, uh, your time. Um, are uh, Sarah and John Barrington still with us? Can I say just one thing for a moment? Oh, uh, well, we... oh yes. Sure, great. We, we did call, we, we called animal control, we called the Department of, of, of Health, we, we figured even in the room for misinterpretation, we called them all on the line uh, before we actually built anything. So and as much as there was an attempt to follow a process, we, it, it, they're the ones who told us we didn't require anything from it. So we followed the process exactly as told by the people who were in charge of the process. Um, we didn't actually speak Speak, speak to you. Uh, um, you're, you're right, and that, that's because actually the, the coop isn't within, it doesn't border your property, basically. The, the, the coop itself doesn't, and the pin we were told explicitly uh, doesn't require, it doesn't have any abutment requires. So, so sorry, Joseph, but we, everyone we talked, we saw around, you're in your backyard, you got the privacy fence up, we actually don't encounter you a lot more in our backyard, so it's not quite so easy to talk to you. Uh, when, when the time came to build the one part that we thought might have been near your property, had we been told, oh yeah, this one requires special variance, oh trust me, we would have spoken to you about the matter then. Um, the, the, the coop itself, in as much as we were describing the process, we followed it to the letter, it was, you know, there, there, there's clearly a mismatch between the written process and what we were told by the people in the department, though. So, I just want to point out that we aren't just going willy-nilly here. No, thank you very much. I, I appreciate Hi, it. Miss, Mr. Leonard, if it's okay. Um, I also wanted to follow Joseph, but I don't know what the right process is. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's to be recognized by the chair, and uh, I recognize you here and now. Why don't you just tell us your name and address? Yeah, I'm Des Allen. I live in Unit 1 at 5 Austin, and this is my husband, Ubakar Joseph. His name is Buba Jame. Um, I also know um, Auntie Islaine and Uncle Charles. Hi, how are you? Um, they live right behind us. I just wanted to kind of echo what Joseph said and the reason why I'm here today. So first of all, this is my first time attending any sort of local town process, right? Um, which is a shame given that I, you know, I went to the Kennedy School of Public Policy, so I am, <laughs> I should have probably been um, participating in more local um, town things, but just moved to Milton a couple of years ago. Um, I think the re what really brought me here today, I think to Joseph, 
Joseph's point was really the process. Um, I think, you know, when we described the process, what really struck me is that um, there was clear intent and effort made to write a letter that was disparaging of neighbors um, and to like drop that letter off in people's mailboxes. But to, to me, it seemed that that same effort had it been put into sending a letter saying, hey, this is something that we would like to do in our backyard for our kids. Um, we want to ensure that, you know, neighbors and, and I sorry, I know Dee Dee's name. I think it's Aaron. Aaron just mentioned, hey, Mr. Joseph, your line doesn't, you know, your property doesn't exactly align with where the coop is. Um, if there's ever anyone who's been in our backyards, <laughs> um, we were actually just here trying to, my husband and I like legitimately were trying to sketch out like, I don't know if you can see that, we're nerds. Um, we were trying to sketch out property lines to understand what everyone was saying. It's so close that Ah, there you go. Thank you, Mr. Gray. <laughs> it's so know. it's so close that You're the notion that in. sorry? You're all very packed in. Yeah, like I'm I'm worried that my children, we have twin two year olds and a six year old, like I'm sure Auntie Islin's heard them multiple times <laughs> because she's that close. Or Joseph, you know, poor Joseph's car has been um maybe like bumped into by bicycles. I mean, like this is a close knit community and one where we talk to one another. And so for me, as I, you know, I'm new to Milton, I hope to make Milton home. Um, I'm raising three boys in Milton. I want them to understand what community is. It's the reason why we moved here. Um, and I love being in Miltapan, which is what I call this place, right? I love being in a close-knit community that um, has a diversity of people, diversity of interests. Um, and we're all here because we're trying to raise our families. We're trying to, you know, just, really have a good sense of community here. And so for me, it was really shocking to realize that so much effort could be put into um, a dispute, but that same effort wasn't put into ensuring that there was like shared understanding and shared agreement that this was something that wouldn't kind of impede on others. Um, I think the point that stuck out to me most was, I, I definitely hear it's a hassle to have to move it. I guess the question I would ask Dee Dee and Aaron to reflect on is what does it mean to then now have neighbors who are saying that they don't want this there? Are they now meant to live with that? And what is that quote unquote nuisance? How do you weigh that against the nuisance of moving a chicken coop? Um, I think 2020 is an incredible year where we are learning more and more every day about what it means to be in community with each other and how connected we are. And at some point, we have to understand that there are trade-offs. Um, and I know Sarah and John, um, it's not easy buying a home in Milton. And I'm, I don't know much about their, them, but I know that they invested an incredible amount to move into that home. Um, and so essentially why we're here today is to ask them to have to live with a chicken coop that's essentially in their backyard because their backyard I think at most is maybe 10 feet wide um, because it would be too much of a nuisance to move it. Um, and that's something that they'll have to also live with for decades, right? And so I think in the spirit of community and in the spirit of where we are right now in 2020, I'm with Mr. Joseph in the sense that it really it hurts to think that this is the process for something like this. Like you would hope that it would be something else and something different. And so, as Mr. Joseph said, it's not really about the chickens at this point. I think what really brought us here today was, was just, yeah, the process and, or the lack thereof um, and what that means. And what, what would that mean for us as we become homeowners one day, hopefully, <laughs> Depending on housing prices, what would that mean for us? Is, is this what we would have to kind of, is this how things are done in Milton? I don't know, but um, I would hope that there's a different process and I wouldn't want to set that precedent. Oh, sorry, Booba. Um, my name is Booba. I, I just wanted to add one thing if it's possible. Um, uh, I think to Joseph's point about um, essentially the consequences, um, um, if you make a mistake or if you don't follow the rules, you gotta you gotta have consequences. I have small kids now, and that's I think um, lesson that even myself, if I make a mistake, I have to um, 
maybe pay for it or maybe we learn from it. But I think it's it's a uh, it's important not to use community or children that language when it's so sad and not the other way around. So I think if it was for the kids and we made a mistake, probably the kids would remember this too. So I think it's important that we we um we be neighborly and we understand that. Um, even if there was no process in place, even if there's no rules, even if we didn't know, I think it was uh, the fundamental here is to really be respectful of uh, of others. Um, and to me, that's kind of those two messages I wanted to leave. You know, we have to have consequences are there for a reason and it's for, in our own interest. And then we really just have to be respectful of each other, um, regardless of being friendly or not. Um, it's really important for a community going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your comments. Is there anybody else uh, present virtually or by telephone who wants to be heard regarding this application? Um, we are also here, but I think Ms. King might have had a question. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No worries. I was just playing with my pen. <laughs> um, okay, so this is, uh, this is Sarah and John Barrington of 9 Austin Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, we Welcome don't really... Welcome to the Board of Appeals, by the way. Sorry, what? I said, welcome to the Board of Appeals. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I think we don't really need to speak much more. I think we just echo Joseph's comments, Des's comments, Booba's comments. Um, we also really don't want to be here. It was not our intent to um, feel that way, but we do have to live with it forever. Um, I do just want to say that um, it was brought to my attention that a letter was circulated um, you know, to all my neighbors down on this street, and I don't know who else got the letter, um, but it was sent with our address on it. Um, other people live in this home, so their address was also made public. Um, it said we were bullying um, when we haven't actually spoken to them after the last complaint. Um, we, we knew that we weren't coming to an agreement, so we, we felt that it was best to leave it alone. Um, saying our complaints were unfounded. And I think Joseph did a nice job saying that, you know, I, I think we used the right channels to express our concerns when it didn't go well with our neighbors. Um, so to write that to our neighbors and to say that, um, I just want to say it felt really disrespectful and hurtful. And while we disagree with the coop and its location and its scope and its size, um, I don't think I've ever said anything negative about Aaron and Dee Dee and their character. So it just felt really hurtful to find out that that happened. Um, and I felt like some of those things in the letter um, were really unnecessary and kind of unfair. Um, I think we can disagree about the process and the coop, but um, that was really hurtful to hear. And I think we're new to this town. Um, we moved in December. We didn't know what the coop was. We didn't know the rules either. Um, so we didn't really know what our rights were. Um, and when we found out, we did try to address it. Um, and it didn't go well. So it's just kind of distressing to um, have that brought to our attention. Yeah, we, uh, we let them know that we weren't okay with it and we wanted to, it to move back. We, we are located on a pretty small lot and it really kind of overshadows our whole yard. Um, you know, we, we just, we'd like our neighbors to kind of be more neighborly and, you know, re relocate it closer to their property than ours so that they can kind of better manage it, manage the sounds, smells, any sort of like needs that the chickens may have. I mean, we really, we don't really, we're f fine that they have chickens, you know, chickens are fine in Milton. It's just, we don't want them to be our chickens. Like this isn't what we signed up for. This is when we bought this property. We, we, want, we want this to, you know, be taking care of them. I'm sure that they'll do a fine job, but I'd, I'd like it, you know, just you know, closer to theirs property and just less, less close to ours. Cause right now it's really, it's on top of it, of our property. And I just feel like all the time that there, there are our pets and, and, you know, this, this is a, you know, what, what we wanted or signed up for. So we, we ask that uh, the board of appeals, you know, uh, help us in making that decision. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Barrington. Uh, is there anybody else uh, present who wishes to uh, either ask questions or speak in opposition to this request for variance? Okay, there's nobody uh, uh, else present. 
Uh, let me just ask the uh, the applicants whether they have anything to say uh, uh, regarding the status of this application at the present time. Uh, yes, I just wanted to clarify said letter. I was actually asked to write uh, the letter as part of the appeals process. Um, and the only thing I said was what I just said here to you now. Uh, describe the backstory and the back and forth between the different departments and the neighbors. Um, there's nothing new that the letter said that you haven't heard tonight. Uh, and I was asked to write it to the neighbors to describe what, what I'm doing, why I'm applying for a variance. And basically everything I said to today, that's what I put in the letter and I was asked to um, send that letter to the abutting neighbors to make them aware of uh, this case. So that's what that letter was. Um, and as for talking to everybody before that, I did not imagine that this would be such a problem, that I would need permission from the whole block to build. I did speak with uh, the neighbors immediately next to the chicken coop. Um, the people in the back were just moved out at the time and I was it was not chronologically possible to talk to John and Sarah beforehand because they just didn't live there yet. Um, the coop is maybe 20 feet or so from Joe's property. So I didn't think it was close enough or would be a problem. Otherwise I would have, if, if I had known that this is how people felt, of course I would have talked to everybody. I just had no idea that what I put in my yard would be such a big problem for the entire neighborhood. Again, believe me, there are, I did not do this with the intent of fighting everybody. I don't want to make enemies of my neighbors. I just honestly did not realize that putting a chicken coop on my property would be such a big concern to everybody. Five that by I would, seven coop. But, yeah, that I would yeah. need to go around and speak with everybody beforehand and ask permission. If, if I had known that that's how people felt, I would have definitely done it. It's also worth noting we did speak to a lot of our neighbors about it, uh, the, the, especially the ones we encounter. Uh, um, we didn't, I mean, we didn't see Joseph. I mean, we, we, all the other neighbors we could, the former occupants of that home and everything, Charles and Isling, even neighbors on our other side, across the street, all the ones we could contact that we actually knew, we did speak to them, to be fair. But, well, yes, but specifically, John anyway, and Sarah we, just didn't live there yet, so we, yeah. we couldn't have spoken with them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for your uh, for your comments. So, uh, if there's nobody else who uh, wishes to be heard, what we'll do here is we'll uh, we'll end the evidence portion of this hearing, and uh, we'll uh, discuss the application here in this open session, and um, see if some sense can be made out of this. Um, let me uh, let me start with Mrs. King. Do you want to start first? Oh, I don't know. I'm okay. still I'm still pondering. Okay, Mr. Gray, do you want to be heard first, or? Well, uh, since Mrs. King doesn't want to go first, I will. I'll, I'll take it on, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Give her time to think. Uh, um, I'm weigh I'm weighing whatever. Weighing. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to weigh here. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say I thought that uh, I was impressed with the all of the presentations that I heard tonight, it was all extremely helpful. I thought the applicants, um, you know, put a lot of detail into their presentation and I found that helpful. And I also found extremely helpful the comments of all the rest of you. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, for me, I mean, I, I looked at this material in advance and thought a lot about it when I was driving around the state today and it for me we're, we're the, the board of appeals and our job is to enforce the zoning bylaw and it's to grant relief uh in the form of a variance um in, in when uh you know we can spin the situation within the requirements of this statute which is now appearing upside down and backwards in your and you think but we have a very strict um, uh, uh, 
set of rules that we need to apply, findings that we have to make in order to be able to grant a variance. Um, in this case, we're being at, basically it boils down to the location of the chicken coop and and the um, and the pen and. We've, we've got in writing um, a letter from the code enforcement officer saying that the, both the coop and the pen are too close to the rear and side lot lines. And so we have a violation on file. And the purpose of your application was to basically address those violations by getting a relief in the form of basically two variances. One variance from uh, the, you know, keeping it having the, from the side lot, uh, uh, distance from the side lot line and another one from the rear lot line. The, as I understand it, the, 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 the zoning bylaw requires you to be eight feet at least from the one side and maybe 10 feet from whatever you read at the beginning. But, but the, the evidence is it's only one foot from both. Okay, so it, it, and from the photographs that you've submitted, the it's obvious that the coop and the pen are located hard up against the property lines okay so in order for what you're basically asking us to do is to grant you permission to break those rules in other words to be able not to have to move the coop and the pen so that they're at least the minimum required distances away and in order to be able to do that we have to find that there's some we have, to, we have to meet all the requirements in this statute with specific findings, okay, in order to have craft a decision that will hold up on an appeal, especially where there's, you know, opposition uh, to that, to what, to the current, you know, to the, to the variance itself. So, I guess where, where I'm going, I mean, is that, I'm finding it difficult to find, find and make the required findings under chapter 40A section 10, if I've got the correct statute. I think that's- No, it's, it's 40A section yes, 10. Yes, 40A section 10. We have to find that there's something, that's why I was asking you questions about the lot, right? The shape, we have to find that there's something about the shape and can, the, the soil conditions or the topography or the shape of your lot lines that's unlike the other ones in the neighborhood. And, you know, I heard some stuff about the, the topography a little bit, but but not that it's substantially different from um, from the other ones. And even if we make those findings, then we have to we have to find that a literal enforcement of this bylaw would cause you a substantial hardship. So then the question is, okay, is picking up and moving this structure a substantial hardship? Maybe yes. Maybe no, I haven't quite made my mind up on that yet. But even if we find that it is a substantial hardship, then uh, we have to find that we can grant you relief that doesn't nullify or degrade from the intent of the bylaw and the ordinance. And it seems to me that the intent of the, the dimensional requirements in the zoning bylaw is, to, is, is for exactly this type of situation where we don't want a structure that's abutting one foot from a property line. And uh, I would say perhaps even especially a structure that might, you know, create a nuisance. I'm not saying that we're finding that it creates a nuisance. I think there's been some conflicting evidence on that, but, but it, it seems to me that it, it, it would, it, it's difficult for at least, I, and I very much want to hear what my fellow board members, board members have to say about it but I'm finding it difficult at the moment to find a way to make it fit within the statutory requirements. And I'm, and that's, so at the moment I'm leaning to towards be, finding it difficult to find a way to, to grant a variance in this case, but I want to hear what Mrs. King and Mr. Leonard have to say about it because I'm still open to, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm open to being, uh, uh, rebutted. I just need to, I need to hear what they have to say. Okay, well, look, I'll, I'll pick up the ball and, and run with it, Nick. Thank you uh, uh, very much. Sorry to take so many words. <laughs> no, no, I'm, it, you haven't heard the words uh, because here I go. So Okay. Grab, grab a Coke and enjoy it. I think part of the, the, the problem that we have here uh, is uh, confusion in the ranks, uh, maybe a little bit from the town and the health department. 
Um, and we have some young kids who obviously are well intended, um, who want to have a chicken coop for their uh, their growing children, and uh, but un unfortunately uh, uh, didn't want to uh, uh, hire a lawyer or hire a, a planner or, or a real estate planner of some kind uh, who could who could guide them through the uh, legal requirements that they face. And I want to spend a few minutes, um, and I don't want to waste everyone's time, but everyone spent a lot of time on this and they have a lot personally invested. Uh, I, I have to say that I, I think I agree with Mr. Andrews that really this isn't about chickens, uh, even though incidentally um, the, the chickens have a, an effect on the neighborhood. But uh, this, is, this is really about compliance with the zoning bylaw. And uh, we're the Board of Appeals. Uh, we're entrusted to enforcing the, uh, the zoning bylaw um, in, in cooperation with the, um, the building department. And I, I, I think the difficulty is that the, uh, the applicants are, are really not in a, a position um, to, to understand the uh, difficulty of securing a variance in Massachusetts uh, that uh, faces good faith opposition. Um, and so uh, we don't want to force you to go out and, and hire fancy lawyers and all of that and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, so I want to spend a little time on the legalities of it and in the process. Um, Nick is uh, is correct. The uh, process of securing a variance in Massachusetts is is very strict. Uh, it's the statutory prerequisites are, are not necessarily applied as as fully and perhaps harshly in cases where there's no opposition to the variance and the variance has an incidental effect on the uh, the neighbors and. Uh, um, you know, may bring some good to the applicants. But uh, when, uh, when an application is uh, presented with good faith opposition, then uh, it becomes enormously difficult, uh, even being represented by the best lawyers in Boston, and we have two of them on the panel here, uh, to, to get a grant, to get a variance. Um, here, to get a variance under Section 10, the circumstances has to relate to soil condition, shape, topography, which especially affect this parcel and doesn't affect the zoning district in which it is located. Also, the literal provisions of the zoning bylaw has to involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the applicants. And thirdly, desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purposes of the zoning bylaw. I, th I think the applicants uh, have some arguments on the first and second of those, though I don't think they carry the day. Uh, the third, um, I, I think, uh, defeats this application for a variance. And the, the case law says that in order to get a variance, you don't have to prove one of those three uh, factors, you have to prove all of them. You have to prove each and every one of them um, to show that a variance is, uh, is, is justified. And, and, and further, um, those prerequisites are conjunctive and not disjunctive, and the failure to establish any one of them is fatal. Um, so that uh, even if you prove the three elements, one, two, and three, and I don't think you come close to proving three, uh, if the board found that all three conditions were met, uh, the board still doesn't have to grant the variance because the, the law says that the right to a variance, if you prove the statutory factors, is discretionary in the Board of Appeals. So you can prove the three factors, but the board could uh, find reason that uh, you shouldn't uh, have the variance. And, and so I think 
um, this is it's, it's a virtually difficult and maybe impossible road to, to hoe under these circumstances. Um, there's another principle of law that applies here, and, and that is a variance isn't properly granted under the applicable case law when the hardship is created by the landowner. And uh, here the landowner uh, uh, built the um, chicken coop apparently very well, um, and uh, perhaps without the necessary guidance from the health department and there's confusion in the ranks there. I, I think legally speaking, you need a permit to have this chicken coop and have chickens on the property. Uh, but if, if the process had been followed, uh, one of the indicators and requirements of, of the Board of Health was that, that you file a rough sketch of the proposed either shed, structure, chicken coop, barn, whatever, you, you, wherever you're gonna house the animals. And uh, if, the, if the process had been followed, and it wasn't, and I'm not necessarily blaming the applicants for that. I, it sounds like the uh, Board of Health is in the, was in the process of trying to put together uh, this. Uh, and admittedly, the application I have here is one that I, I picked up this afternoon on the, on the internet. But if, if that rough sketch had been uh, submitted to the Board of Health, I think, and it showed the, um, the chicken coop one foot off the line, both the sideline and the back line. I can imagine somebody wouldn't have brought it to the attention of the applicants that uh, that was a gross zoning violation. Uh, it, it's, it's virtually built on the lot line and you, you don't have to graduate from the Harvard Law School to, to think that that may be uh, uh, not in compliance with the, uh, the, the zoning bylaw. Um, so I, I think that legally speaking, the applicants here are in uh, real trouble. Um, I, I also think that uh, you have to look at the purpose of the zoning bylaw. Um, and, and the purpose of the bylaw is, is to provide uniformity and protection for the neighbors. Um, and and um, if you, Mr. Andrew said this, and he's 100% he's right, uh, the neighborhood consists of very small lots. Uh, and for, for example, the, the, the applicant's lot is 8,593 square feet at 102 uh, Brook Road. And yet uh, the, uh, the residents at 9 Austin Street, which is directly uh, uh, behind them, uh, which is uh, uh, the application of Sarah and, and John Barrington, contains 3,650 square feet. And their, their backyard uh, lot line is, is 56 feet wide. Which, which shows this is a very older section of town. These small lots are unbuildable uh, in, in this day. And here, the, the chicken coop, um, according to the applicant's own matter, is uh, 30 feet uh, in length. So it takes up 30 feet of the 56 foot backyard uh, of the Barrington property. Admittedly, there's a fence there, uh, but uh, if you look at photographs of the Barrington's uh, backyard, um, this chicken coop is closer to their residence than it is closer uh, to the applicant's residence. Uh, the coop is about 50, 55 to 60 feet from the applicant's residence, and it's far less. Uh, it's almost right next to where the, uh, the Barrington's uh, have a, a small table and an umbrella uh, so as to enjoy their backyard. Uh, and, and so that, um, that, that's really and it's an important consideration here. Um, the, the case really is about structures and the conformity of structures with the rear and side lot lines the fact that it's a chicken coop and they may make noise and roosters were making noise there previously and 
the the um, Barrington's um, uh, smell foul odors from the uh, uh, chicken coop, according to their letter that they filed. Um, that burden, if there are, and I know the applicants say there are no foul odors, and uh, I, I don't know the answer, but if there are foul odors, then that should be the responsibility of the applicants and then not um, uh, the Barringtons. Um, and uh, the, the chickens make noise, um, maybe not all night long or anything, but uh, it, it seems to me that the Barringtons and uh, uh, Mr. Andrews to some extent, they bear more of a burden from the presence of the chicken coop being there um, than, than do the applicants. Because I, I have no doubt that the applicants place the chicken coop where they placed it in order to preserve their backyard, uh, to make it more usable, uh, and maybe to have the chicken coop a little bit out of the way. But making that decision not only violates the zoning bylaw, it puts the onus of the burdens of the chicken coop on the neighbors and then not on themselves. If they had built the chicken coop right up by their house, which is up by the street, uh, not only would they not have uh, violated the zoning bylaw, uh, the, the ad any adverse effects from the chicken coop or the pen, whatever they may be, would be burdened by the applicants and not by the neighbors. And the bylaw is to, uh, in my view, uh, to uh, protect the neighbors. So that um, I, I think here that um, unfortunately, uh, I wish there was an easy answer. Uh, I, I think this uh, application for variance fails as a matter of law. Um, and based upon the facts. And I, I, I think that um, if, if we granted this variance and there was an appeal, uh, not only would the town be put uh, to the burden of trying to defend the, uh, the decision, um, we, we would be reversed in, in about 10 seconds and most Superior Court judges, and I've practiced in Boston for 50 years, so I've, I've been to the rodeo a few times, uh, did have concerns as to the competence and mental abilities of the members who heard the application. I, I really sincerely think so. Uh, or they would wonder what, what strange things are going on here. Um, and then you put the neighbor, you put the applicants through the burden of going through uh, court proceedings and, and it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money for everybody. I, I wish there was a simple answer to this um, such that you can lift up the, the chicken coop and put it on a slide or something and tow it up the hill and, and place it eight to 10 feet off of the, uh, um, lock lines, and uh, I, I'm not sure that's been fully explored. I, I hate to think of uh, the, uh, the applicants uh, being required to disassemble the chicken coop that they spent a year building and then rebuild it somewhere else. Uh, I, I think there's, there may be some imaginative ways that at least most of the chicken coop can, can be moved uh, hopefully without large expense, in order to conform with the zoning bylaw. Um, and, but the, the, there's another major, major point that I want to make, and, and that is, uh, if, I, if I heard the applicants correctly, um, even if they had to move the chicken coop uh, eight feet back, they wanted to use the area between the moved chicken coop and the lot line in order to place the pen there so that the chickens would actually be closer uh, to uh, the uh, 
Barrington's property than the pen. Um, and uh, first of all, I, I think that uh, the pen is an accessory use. I, I think the building department uh, told um, uh, the applicants that it was not an accessory use. I think it is an accessory use um, as it uh, was supposed to be constructed. Uh, it, it's ancillary uh, to the use of the coop. Uh, it has a roof, it has a fence, and the chickens are going to run around. And I, I, I think the applicants should give substantial thought uh, that um, the pen not be placed in that position because I think it's rubbing salt in wounds that, that, that shouldn't be further aggravated. Uh, I would vote to find that the, um, the pen, as proposed to us, uh, is indeed an ancillary structure and has to be placed 10 feet off of the sideline and eight feet off of the uh, rear property line. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, allowing the pen to be constructed uh, on or within a foot of the property line uh, is legally infirm. Um, it, it's uh, poor discretionary judgment on behalf of the Board of Appeals uh, and it's unfair to the neighbors. So uh, I think that's my preliminary analysis of this, uh, this application. I wish, I wish that um, uh, more um, information had been provided. I, I wish that um, the applicants uh, understood the technicalities and the difficulty of securing variances uh, and, and were urged to build the, um, the shed or coop. Um, eight feet off the property line and we wouldn't be here today. Um, I, I, I can't assure you that the application was the same in 2019 as it is today. Um, I, I can't tell you that, but I, 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 I would think that the requirement of making a raw uh, drawing of where the uh, Coop was supposed to go. I can't imagine that was not in the 2019 application. Um, and if it had been filled out and the process had been followed here, I think uh, the applicants would have been aware to a greater extent um, that they also needed to consult with the zoning bylaw um, and not that they could build the chicken coop any anywhere they want. So uh, those, are, those are my thoughts. Um, sorry to have taken so long, but I think it's, uh, it's important to, uh, we, we've talked a lot about the process, uh, but I, I think when you're dealing with variances, you have to talk about the law and the requirements of the law, which are very, very strict. Uh, Mrs. King, do you want to be heard? Sure. You know, the, the lawyer in me was looking at this as something that um, the, the application was, was going to be denied. Yet, there was a part of me that was hoping that it could be accommodated. And so I kind of got, you know, excited listening to the applicants talk about their application and was sorry that they had been misled on a lot of issues. But I kind of wish that we had heard from um, the Barringtons right after that because the sincerity of both couples is clear. And I felt that um, the upsetment um, voiced by the Barringtons, particularly Mrs. Barrington, was, was absolutely sincere and very troubling to her. And that bothered me a lot. So it was kind of hearing that at the end that was kind of making me have to 
readjust where I was thinking and where I knew I had to go. And I, I needed some time to um, hear my hear my colleagues talk, of course, but also to let to let the sincerity of both um, both couples um, kind of uh, figure out where the balance is. You know, the the hardship of of being a neighbor to something that that's upsetting to them, the hardship of having to um, move a chicken coop. Um, but it's it is clear to me that. Um, um, <laughs> Nobody wants this to go further in the courts, and it 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 certainly could. And it could, you know, I won't say bankrupt, but it would certainly hit your budget if if that was going to be done. And I don't feel that that would be um, serving anybody in the long run. So um, I do see this as something that we cannot give a variance for, um, and I just want to expect uh, express my sadness that. Um, that it was that, that that it's a tough decision, because I know even though I know it's the right thing to do as a lawyer, as a human being, I I was touched by what everybody said tonight, and I just wanted to let everybody know that. I think that's, that's very well put, Nick. Do you have anything further to no, say? No, nothing further except to second Virginia's comments. Uh, but, but I have nothing else to. Okay, let let me make one comment, and then we'll put this to a vote. Um, even if we vote to deny the application for variance, uh, really doesn't mean that uh, there are no solutions to this issue. Uh, the building department always tries to work with people who are caught in predicaments like this. I think uh, both uh, Mr. Gray and uh, Ginny King have uh, expressed the truthful and honest appraisals of everyone's motivation here. And there's no evil motivation anywhere. Um, and this may bring an opportunity uh, for bringing the neighborhood together in a sense, that even, even if the uh, applicants don't get their variance, uh, nothing prevents um, Mr. Mr. Andrews, excuse me, Mr. Andrews, uh, Des Allen, um, and, and her colleagues, um, even uh, the John, Sarah, and John Barry, from for getting together, having a big barbecue trying to heal the wounds that have been caused uh, and uh, all get together and help to move this or reconstruct this chicken coop and the, uh, the pen to a position on the applicant's lot that conforms with the zoning. It could almost be a community project. Nobody requires that, we can't do it. But it seems to me that everyone is uh, reaching out for healing here uh, and for cooperation uh, and for friendship and, and for an end of uh, uh, harsh remarks uh, that uh, perhaps were unintended. Uh, so e even though tonight we're going to deny this application for variance from we certainly have two votes, and I think Mr. Gray is, uh, is on our side as well. Even though we denied this application for variance, that doesn't prevent the applicants and the neighbors from getting together and making some sensible arrangement to have this chicken coop and the uh, pen uh, move to a position of uh, legality on the lot uh, so that all of the burden doesn't fall on the applicants, uh, and it may be a way of um, healing uh, in the neighborhood. But as I say, uh, we're we're upholders of the zoning bylaw. That's why we get appointed, and we're not psychiatrists or uh, politicians or uh, uh, community healers. Although we love to see the communities heal. So, I mean, that's just a suggestion that's a, that's a possibility. Um, and, and I know 
that um, both Jay and uh, Mr. Prondek uh, would be thrilled to see that happen. Uh, and and I, I tend to think they would exercise their discretion on the enforcement part of this case uh, to give the uh, neighborhood and the applicants an opportunity to do that uh, without rushing into court and uh, getting all kinds of uh, judicial uh, orders or judgments or decrees. So. So there are no votes in favor of granting either of those variances. Uh, all those who wish to vote uh, to deny both applications for variances, please say aye. 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 Mrs. King, did I hear you? You heard an aye, yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, the application for uh, both variances are, are denied. Uh, we'll prepare a decision in due course. Uh, but my, my sincerest hope is that uh, everyone here, uh, they're all good people, and I, I hope that they can put uh, bygones aside um, and help to work for a solution that's, uh, that's best for the applicants as well yes. as the neighbors. I'm so, sorry, can I ask two follow-up questions? Um, I guess you can, but uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm it depends on really what they are. What's your questions? Yes, they are directly related to this. Uh, first question is, um, given that only the neighbors in the back are inconvenienced by the coop and not the neighbors on the side, uh, can we move the coop out from the back line but not from the side line if they express this in writing that they're okay with it? No, you're gonna to have to conform to the bylaw. You're gonna to have to conform to the bylaw. What's your second question? The second question is um, in terms of the specific laws and definitions of what structure counts as what. If I took the roof off of the pen, would it still be considered? At that point it's a fence, I guess. Yeah, at that point it's a fence, yeah. Uh, especially given that both building inspectors told me that if I took the roof off, it will be okay where it is. What's the exact? Long. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it uh, that depends upon how the uh, building inspector uh, uh, makes the determination, and I think uh, part of that would be uh, where you put the pen. I, I think if you tried to put the pen uh, between the chicken coop and the rear lot line, no. Uh, if I don't put anything there, we'll put a nice tree. Or we have something. a tree beside it, but. Yeah, we'll put a, well, look at, I, I think <clears throat> I think that's something you should discuss with the neighbors, and uh, if, if you uh, uh, all speak to uh, Mr. Prondack or they appoint a spokesperson or whatever, uh, I, I think that's an issue that uh, I, I think can be resolved within the building department uh, satisfactorily to everyone. Uh, because you'll be surprised, the last thing the building department likes to do is to file enforcement actions. Uh, sometimes they're required, um, if there's intransigence or uh, uh, difficulty, difficult personalities of the person uh, subject to the enforcement order, and sometimes that's the case. It's not the case here. Uh, my, my feeling is that uh, there's, there's good faith all around here. And I, I, I tend to think that uh, uh, that that can be accommodated right at the building department in cooperation with your uh, with your neighbors, and you don't have to come back to us uh, on that issue. But right now, we're we're ruling on the application as is, is presently presented. Um, if it's going to be altered and the and the coop is going to be moved, and you want the pen to be some other place. Um, then that, that's something you should take up with your neighbors and take up with the, um, the building uh, commissioner. You, you may find that um, even with the roof, if the pen is in a satisfactory location, it may not be an issue. I don't know how important, I don't, I don't know chickens. The pen, I, I, is, harder. The 
pen is harder to move than the coop because yeah. it's cemented into the ground. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, ironically, the pen is the one of the two structures that I called the department overseeing this before building it and got two green lights from two different inspectors to put it yeah, where it is. It'll be hard to move afterwards. So that okay. one we can honestly say we followed the process and we got confirmation from the two people in charge, yeah, right. uh, Mr. Condact and Jay. So yeah, nonetheless, that's the one where we followed all the processes and yet that wasn't enough. I, I, I think that the, the principal issue is the present position of the coop. Yeah. Yes. And, I, and I think if, if, uh, if, if you talk with your neighbors and have a barbecue or something, and uh, I think the pen is something that can work itself out and there's probably gonna be no need to come back to the Board of Appeals on that, okay? okay. So I'm, I'm sorry this has taken so long. I know it's been heart-wrenching and um, it's, it's been difficult for everybody, but uh, I was impressed, and uh, Mrs. King said it, I was really impressed with, uh, uh, with everyone's uh, uh, attitude. I think this is a nice, nice neighborhood, and I think all of this can be, uh, uh, can be worked out uh, without um, hopefully any more legal fussing and future legal expense. So thank you all for attending. We appreciate your... Uh, 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 and I appreciate your uh, uh, comment. Miss Sutton here is passing me a note that uh, uh, that uh, Des. Uh, I'm sorry. Can I have the note, please? Okay, Des. I, I don't mean to make uh, Des angry here because of my own ignorance. Um, I, I think I said that Des is uh, 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 Des was present with her colleague, but her colleague happens to be her husband, and <laughs> that that's really important to state. And I apologize to you if uh, if, if that sounded offensive. I didn't I didn't mean it. So thank you all for attending. I'm sorry it took so long, uh, but I, I see light at the end of the tunnel here, and I I hope you're all able to work it out. Uh, I, I think uh, here from Mrs. Uh, King, a motion to adjourn. And I yes, think, I move to adjourn. I think I hear a second uh, from Mr. Gray. So all those in favor of adjourning, please. Oh, I should say this. Uh, um, Nick, are you able to write this decision? Sure. Okay, we'll get the paperwork to you. I can send you some of my... That would be helpful. I can all of that, so you won't have to spend uh, your afternoon doing it. So all those in favor of uh, adjourning the hearing of the board? Aye. Aye. Thanks a lot. Uh, have a good night, folks. Uh,